beautiful audience, I hope all of you are already on work mode or vacation mode or getting ready go to go back to school mode. Whatever the mode required it is, I wish you find yourself present in the moment, enjoying it and making the best out of it. My name is Fabiana Espinosa and I will be guiding you through this journey from Santa Cruz, Bolivia in South America. I like to remind you that you do not only see us through the Abby Ayala channel, but you can also follow us on Facebook, Twitter and later on when the show is over on our channel on YouTube. topic is a well-known issue that unfortunately has been growing in many countries with the past of time. Today we talk about bullying. Bullying is the use of force, threat or coercion to abuse, intimidate or aggressively dominate others. It is divided into four basic types of abuse, emotional, verbal, physical and cyber. It typically involves subtle methods of coercion, such as intimidation. Different cases of bullying have been identified and the victims can be anyone, seniors, adults, teenagers, kids, and lately, even young kids. This is a problem that has taken lives and not only how to identify it and care for it, it's necessary. To talk about this, we are going to connect with Lina Acevedo. She is a wonderful woman that works entirely with people and for people. She is the kind of person that infuses you with energy, hope and love. It is my pleasure today to introduce Lina Acevedo. Lina is the type of woman, the kind that you speak with, you are full of hope, you, you end up full of love. I am truly thrilled and so happy to have you here on the show. Welcome to Connected, Lina. Let's go ahead with the first question. Um, Lina, you were born in Colombia, so you had that transition, Colombia, US. Please tell us, how was that transition for you? Hi, Fabiana, and hi uh, to the, all, all the audience of this awesome program. Well, Fabiana, it, it was, it was a, a smooth transition since I got here when I was only 11 years old. Um, I am now 50, so I've been here most of my life, 41 years. So it's been it's been a beautiful journey. Um, I'm, I was born in Colombia, blood in Colombia, but very American also. So yeah, it, it has been it's smooth, but it has been a blessing as well. Right now we're gonna go to a fast cut. We'll be right back. Lena, please hold. And people at home, don't go anywhere. There's more connected. Stay tuned. So Lina, in all of this time living in the US, and I know and I cannot emphasize how Colombian you are because I know you are super Colombian as well, <laughs> but in all of these years living in the US, how did you start working with kids? How did your path um, pointed you towards that place? Okay, well, it started actually 23 years ago, a passion. A passion popped out in my heart for, for children and I am a big believer of the Word of God. So I had an opportunity to start at, at a small church doing what's called Sunday teaching, all right? And it was beautiful for me to connect with children and I fell in love with, with how truthful kids are, with how honest they are. And I was just amazed by it. And I started just following my instincts. I went to and took some um, psychology, infant psychology. I did a couple of years of that. And then uh, after years went by, I kept connecting very well with what was the perfect world, I call it. We all should be children. The world should be leading that by children. So that's how I started. That was a passion and I've been working with them for almost 26 years now. I see. So your like your inclination for kids started on church. And also you have two wonderful, beautiful girls, right? Thank you. I think yes, I do. I have a 30 year old and I have an 18 year old, uh, both girls and, and, and I'm a very happy mommy. I am a single <laughs> mother. I'm a single mother, but I've been able 
to do a good job and a lot of a lot of have to do with my connection there and the passion with children because i have connected with my girls in a more special way because i have them 24 hours of course so yes it has been beautiful i bet so moving on you ended up uh, not only working with kids at church but then you had two big projects tell us about the first one which is the name uh project alfombrita internacional that is tell correct. us about that that is correct i love this one i love this story this this is a beautiful one they invited me once uh for a health um uh, a health uh, festival they had here in, in broward county miami and i asked what was the topic and they say well it's going to be uh obesity and you know they they had a, a few things that we're working on, and I immediately asked, "What what are you going to do with the kids, with the children?" Well, we don't know because they were expecting more than three thousand people, and I was like, "This is going to be boring. This is not going to be anything for kids." For kids, so it was a very nice um, startup. I had an idea to have like a red carpet, so I noticed that there were many kids that were you know overweight and i was amazed by that and and i started feeling the need to do something different that it was it was the beginning of the idea i decided to open an anti-bullying campaign against uh, childhood obesity and bullying which is both go hand in hand right because uh, 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 the physical the, the the image nowadays is a very strong pressure among our children and this is one of the main reasons why they get so bullied so i started uh, with the campaign and i said well i have to to do something fun so what um the main idea of the campaign it's for us to invite every um victim and or every aggressor to come and exchange being a victim or aggressor to do arts so what we do is that promote a platform we offer them a platform where they can come and instead of being angry because we know or many of us know that when the children is very angry you have a lot of a problem psychology problem they want to be aggressive but they all have a talent they all have a gift they have not been paid attention on either school or their homes many of these kids come from uh, dysfunctional families so we exchange um art for them to stop being a bully or for them to speak up because a lot of our children are dying and one of the main reasons is because they, they don't talk so this became a nice and great idea and we've been doing it for a few years now um we have support of a lot of people it has been very effective because these kids are the ones that on our main events are the speakers of what the bullying means so it's a it's a beautiful campaign it's a beautiful campaign we want to transform a life that's my my main Lina, um, what are what's the age range of the kids that you work with? Um, I work with kids that start at elementary to high school. I tell you, four years ago when everything started, I was concentrating in between the 10 and 17. Nowadays, it's got it's gotten so much so strong that we're dealing with five, six, and seven-year-old kids. So basically, from age of five until the age of 18. Uh, we've seen uh, a chaos in our in our children around the world. That is basically the age where bullying gets the start to very very strong ages from 13 to to 18 per se. Correct, and that's um, it's something that it's it's so hard and so delicate to work with because you have the kids when they come to you at church, but they also. Um, have a relationship with other brothers, sisters, and friends at home, and also in school. So, how like you're creating a space where they can come and create art, or develop their skills, or show their passion or our feelings in a different different way? How how does that work exactly? Well, that's one. What well, that's one of the things we have to we will do with them. This is like the 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 um the visual attraction to them because this is connected with what's it's the world of social media okay they all want to be popular or they all want to be famous we promote that on the, our platforms however the problem has to be taken care of from home and it, it is very critical and needed that the parents and the adults the guardians of our children are connected with what's happening with our kids at all times so what we do as well it's on the side hand in hand we work with them and we work with parents 
I do a lot of counseling. I do um, many uh, presentations. What is uh, how a parent can detect when the children is going to bullying? Because remember, a lot of our children don't speak up. You know, don't, don't don't talk. So they have it all inside, and and, and a lot of parents find out at the last minute but it's not because sometimes it's not that they're bad parents it's because they're hiding it so well parents don't know how to identify that so we work on hand in hand with the parents and with the children correct big 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 flag there and uh can you please give us like a little tip what would you say are the tip the things that you have to like care or look when you are around kids there's there's many of them but the most common is isolated they get very isolated they don't want to talk they um have their headphones in and most of the times the music and the messages that they are listening in it is of depression okay because there's a lot of leaders on social media that are promoting depression so that's one isolation um sweaters long sweaters and that is my case i will have to say that i am part of the statistics because my daughter uh, went through bullying twice and she was cutting herself she was copying a pattern of cutting her cutting her arms so she was covering her her arms with sweaters all the time and that for me was very uh sad to find out because she keeps telling me she was cold cold it, the thing was that she was covering her her arms so that's a big big one right there um right. and another one is them being all of a sudden very aggressive okay they get very aggressive with with parents with siblings and they're mad at all times with something because they don't want to tell people what they're going through but they're very upset so those are the most three comments and of course um the, the the obesity when the kids eat a lot and they're very nervous and that that is, that is a one of the main bullying attraction to the bullies because they make fun right. of them because of the physical look but the, i would say those are the three top but isolation uh uh the the the, the, the sweaters and anger is one of the most common right and when it comes to the parents what are like the other three things that you can point and say parents please stop doing this or start doing this well parents nowadays we call it uh they are wind up with a babysitter electronical assistant okay the parents have to stop and have to control not to stop giving them the tools because nowadays these are social media, uh, cell phones, tablets. These are tools that we have for our children, for them, you know, to to be uh, on a, updated with what's out there. That's okay. Nothing against that. But the parents have to be very cautious with the time their children use their devices. There has to be. There's a lot of applications out there. There's a lot of apps that are preventing kids from committing suicide because the parents have uh, the the parenting control on the devices over the kids. So they have to watch out for their social media. I will watch out for the kids they are talking to. Okay, a lot of these kids are very toxic, and our children are just starting to explore. Parents have to get involved in everything on a daily basis. I always tell people. Out of the 24 hours, if you only dedicate, because they're very, in America, we're very busy, okay? Everything in the world is so fast right now that people have, there are excuses that they have to work a lot in less time. But I say 10 minutes a day, Fabiana, 10 minutes a day that you pay attention, eye contact and a good conversation with your child, you will detect what's going on. Because nobody better than parents will know when your child is sad, when it's angry, when it's happy. So I think communication at least 10 minutes a day. It's totally right what you say. And um, okay, so bullying is definitely a big issue. And you started with Alfombrita Internacional. But then your next step was another beautiful project, which is Chiqui Noticias Internacional. So please tell us how did that all started and how is it going today? It's it's going well, Fabiana, and you gonna you guys are gonna see it worldwide soon on a big platform. But how it started was that through the exchange of them doing arts versus bullying, I've noticed that our that our children in this generation are very talented, and everyone wants to be a communicator. They want to communicate. They want to be known. They want to be famous. So I tested a couple of 
kids to see how they will do presenting news chiqui noticias internacional it's part of the um of the umbrella of the organization because we are a non-profit organization chiqui noticias is a profit organization but chiqui noticias is a news program that is going to be launching big time this this 2019 Our kids are the communicators of only 100% good news, okay? And one of the segments, <laughs> I know, one of the segments that we have is that they are going to interview these children that either were victim or bullies who came off the, 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 you know, the problem and became stars. So we're doing a platform for them to be either you want to be you want to be an artist okay let's do it but a lot of the kids are are back in production believe it or not they like to write they like to um we have designers we have uh, a lot of them and we're talking about 10 12 13 years old so chicken noticias is i have to say is my favorite project because i see them there when they see cameras and all this and we are presenting it to the world very soon so you want to have um exclusivity <laughs> of that round i love it thank you i know i know you support it thank you well so the thing is this It's so vulnerable to see kids growing up today. It's like most of the time I see myself and I say, thank God I wasn't a kid when I, with this all internet and social media and everything that happens because we definitely grew up in a different environment when it comes to competition and when it comes different things that in our time, we didn't have to uh, survive with it. We didn't have to worry about it. But today is definitely a big thing. I cannot wait to hear more about your stories. And right now we're gonna go to a fast cut. We'll be right back. Lina, please hold. And people at home, don't go anywhere. There's more Connected. Stay tuned. Welcome back Connected people. Today I'm speaking with Lina Acevedo, who is in Miami, US. Lina, I am not only happy to have you here because I really, really admire you, but also I'm happy to hear about your stories and about your projects. So after all of your experience, I will ask you to please share a story with us. One story in, partic in particular that probably has touched you or changed your mind in any way. Please share with us. Well, Fabiana, I have to say the, 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 the most impacting story was my own daughter. Um, at, the age of, at the age of 14, she started, I, I, as soon as I started the, the organization, it's when my daughter, right. I was very busy at then when everything started and I had a lot of things to do. My daughter was going into a new school and she was a little over a little overweight. Now, now I will say 10 pounds over her weight. So it was a little overweight. However, um, she she had she's a very pretty young girl physically, right? But she had the pressure of looking perfect. It was a school who was a it was a big demand on the girls to look very very pretty. She started getting bullied. Um, and on the second week, week when everything started, I got a call from school. I noticed her, and this is this is something that parents should be aware of. I noticed she was getting isolated. I keep pulling her out of the room. I said, "No, calm it. Uh, eat with mommy in the table. Let's watch a, a show together." She wanted to. No, mom. I want to be alone. I want to be alone. That was going on for like five days on the road. And uh, what I did is that I called school. And I asked the teacher, is my daughter uh, presenting these symptoms? And the teacher said, well, yeah, now that you mention it, yes. She moved from the front seat to the back seat. All right. We left it there. I said to the teacher, please keep an eye on her. Uh, I, always, I also advise parents to be very connected with their school teachers because I, I call them our second parents. They are responsible to teach them a lot of things. So I get a call right after I went to uh, talk to her maybe three days So later I got called from school and said, Ms. Acevedo, you must come to school right away. When I showed up, she was, yes, in the office. There's Melanie at the office and Melanie was cutting herself for the second time. She really wanted to take her life away. So that for me was very shocking, Fabiana. That for me was was was, a, was emotionally a bomb in, in, my, in my mom, my motherhood heart, you know, it's very bad. 
um, of course, I was diligent enough because I was starting the organization. So I was doing all my researches, all my courses and everything. I said, let me apply right now. This is the time. So I went and turned on to my daughter, 100% time attention and learn from her experience that a lot of things I learned from her, from the experience with Melanie communicating a lot. It only went for 10 days, Fabiana, the bullying. But imagine only in 10 days, she was already considering to take her life away because she was calling, being called fat, ugly, uh, horrible. You don't belong to the school because you're not pretty, things like that. She was beat up to death uh, physically. However, okay, so yeah, the whole my thing started. I went from communicating with her to counseling one-on-one. Uh, -on -one. I found her a counselor because our children do want to hear from us, but they don't listen to us all the time. They connect more with other people. So we have to find the right people, if not a counselor, somebody very close to the family so the way, where they can talk and feel comfortable. So Melanie came on board. Um, one of the things that I applied, I said, Melanie, why don't you do something fun about, because she was happy of the fact that she didn't kill herself. When she realized that she was gonna kill herself and then mommy was there, she's been, you know, she has so much love, she kind of immediately turned around and said, oh wow, yeah, I was wrong. So what we did, Fabiana, is that we invited Melanie to um, write something. Melanie write her own story, which I will share with you guys. Uh, I would love to share with you guys. She wrote her own story, it's on video, it's a beautiful story. And that for me has been the best story ever because I went from leaving it as a parent, from having the victim in my house, from transforming her and pulling her out from depression to the other side, which is her identity, how pretty she is, how talented she is, how much people really love her. Not to pay attention to these one or two girls in school, understand? So we did a teamwork because one parent alone can do it. Of course, the help of God, Fabiana, I always say us without God, we're nothing. We need wisdom. We need to really seek what the wise things are. So that is my, my top story, I would say. But, you know, besides Melanie being my main story, I have seen a lot of, a lot of children uh, going through my eyes uh, as victims. Many, many of them to the other side as, as real talented kids. Uh, but a couple of them didn't make it because we didn't have the support from the parents. So yeah, we're, we're trying to at least impact, if we can impact the 1% in the world, Fabiana, of this huge monster, we're gonna make, and make a big change. So this is why I, uh, I, I want to invite everyone watching me because I know it's not only me fighting this, this monster in the world. There's a lot of us that are passionate and worried about our children, about the teenagers. Our generation has to be impacted by good things so yeah that's my my number one story well it's so much a lot to process and i can only imagine your responsibility and how challenged you felt at the moment are seeing what you're trying to fight to have it in your own home well Thank God you are a strong woman and so is she and you guys are just came out out of here. But Lena, I want to ask you a little bit, how about the other side, right? Because we have the victim and we have the kid that has been bullied and we've, we have the parents of a bullied kid. But how about the bully one? How would it be, how can we make the bully get out of there because it's beautiful when we show a kid and say all right listen if you take your life you know you die and you're gonna miss this 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 and we, you know there is a way to speak to them but how about the other kid the one that is having the most fun that is the popular that is enjoying life and is happy and is living in this idea where he's the strong one how can we well, act there well, Fabiana, it's, it's, it's amazing. I love that question, but I, I said all of them are important, but the aggressor for me, I think it's the main kid that we have to pay attention. I immediately, immediately that this happened, I went and seek for her mom, the other girl's mom, the one who beat up Melanie, okay? And I went and, and, and asked to talk to her. Um, I met a, a, a beautiful Haitian mother who was very sorry about the thing that happened, right? But I wanted to connect with her as a parent and I told her what I was doing with the organization and I said, please, let me talk to you. Let me talk to you about your daughter. So sure enough, I found out that uh, mommy 
has been under abuse for more than 25 years, okay? That daddy who was the abuser, or not only abused mommy, was abusing the children. And particularly the girl who, the younger, she was only 14 years old, very young at that moment. And the, the girl only wanted to fight since she opened her eyes until she goes to sleep. She only wanted to fight because she has so much anger inside because she couldn't do anything. She literally wanted to kill her dad and she couldn't. She even went to jail because she wanted to kill her brother, okay? So we're talking about a girl who was already mentally very abused. What I did was I provided, I went and seek, um, you know, in our community, I went and helped mommy to get away from that uh, abuse relationship because it was killing her as well. Mommy was destroyed. When I was able, when mommy was able to open her heart, she said for 10 years, she never spoke with anyone. Nobody, no one approached her. When she was able to talk, we were able to pull her out from that environment. And we got a lot of help for her girl. Her girl after then uh, was able to finish school. We got her and Melanie to forgive each other. Uh, of course, Melanie, then I didn't end up as her best friend, but we were very happy. Melanie acknowledged that that process was amazing. And, and the both of them started helping me with the little projects, you know, a uh, little project that we were doing. And the girl, uh, she was beautiful. She writes, she's a beautiful writer. She's a beautiful girl. We all don't want to be popular, but we were able to work with the victim as well, with the mom. So that right there, I would say that all of them are important. Our, our kids that are being bullied, but I said the aggressor, and we're seeing it worldwide, Fabiana. We're seeing these kids with so much anger uh, collapsing one day and going to schools. We all have kids and teenagers around us. If you see these things, we need to speak to their parents. We need to say, hey, is your child okay? Hey, is your child? Because a, a, a kid or a teenager should be joyful all the time. They don't have no responsibilities. They don't have nothing to worry but go to school. They should be having a happy life. So yes, I think we should all uh, unite, gather, and, and do something about, about our children around us. That is so right, Lina, and I think that, as you said, it's not about making a hundred, two, impacting a hundred, two hundred people, but you know, one by one, and that seed, it's gonna grow and it's gonna impact others. I am so happy to have had you here today. Thank you for the time you spent with us. I can give you a little space so you can say, uh, talk to the audience and would like to say anything. Go ahead now. So I want to tell the audience, thank you for watching this beautiful show. I want to ask everyone to please share the message. Share the message, talk to your friends, do something. Don't just look at it and say, oh wow, what a nice story. Please, we are part of this whole movement. We need you as a parent, as an uncle, as a guardian. We need you to come on board and say no bullying, no bullying around us. We just got to pay attention to our kids and um, we'll be uh, surprising everybody. We have big things coming in our next event. So we'll keep you all posted. Thank you. God bless everyone. And remember that if you want to be happy, you have to have a heart as a child. Thank you, Lina, so much for your words. And I will be sharing the Facebook pages of both of the projects that are so amazing and I cannot congratulate you more. The idea is fantastic and I can only imagine all the fun you have while doing it. Please, a big kiss until Miami. Always be well and until next time with me. Thank Bye, you, Lina. Bye. Thank you. Bye. Thank you for your work. Bye-bye. Love presents us some really tough situations. We learn from them, we value them, and in the best cases, we get inspired from them. Lina and her daughter went through a very difficult situation, a life-threatening one. The fact that both decided together to rise above and help others is extremely admirable. To conclude, I advise you, if you ever witness a situation that doesn't feel good or is not right, do not ignore it. Stand up for what is right. There is always a way to do it. There is always a way to help. 
I welcome back in a week with a new topic and a new friend. Nominate a person you love, you admire, or somebody you would like to support by writing me an email to conectadosbolivia24 at gmail.com. Let's get in touch and let the world know about them. Stay connected until then. Goodbye with me. 